Bartender, no more liquor for these two. They've had more than enough already. More than enough? Holster your guns and drop your gun belts. You're under arrest. Under arrest? Why? Where'd you get that stagecoach? <laughs> yeah, outside of town. Hey, we got awfully tired of sitting in the saddle. Yeah, the driver and passengers were nice enough to want to walk. <laughs> it was just dumb luck you didn't kill anybody the way you came into town. Let's go. Oh, now, come on, Marshal. We're from the King Her. I'm Raw King. This is my brother, Sam. Arch, when he comes into town with the herd, to pay for any damages we've done. That's fine. You can wait for him in jail. Marshal, maybe you didn't hear my brother right. We're the King family. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said drop those gun belts. Nobody tells me nothing! You saw myself. We're in enough trouble now. You know what I said about you? Mind your temper now. Nobody takes my gun. You better listen to him, son. He's giving you good advice. Marshal, you want my gun. You come and get it! Oh, you cut it out, Sam! You hit! My brother you just killed. Tomorrow there'll be 3,000 head of Longhorns and 25 wild cowboys out there on that street, leading them as the toughest trail boss ever left Texas. His name is Arch King. He also is my brother. Stupid move, Marshal. I'm Nels Decker, Cattlemen Freight Association. These men bring a lot of money into Yuma. They do this every year at Trail's End. Not anymore, they don't. The last three lawmen we had said the same thing. They didn't last out the week. My name is Harmon. And I'm here to stay. All right, let's go. Come on. Get an undertaker. I come in, see your door was open. Welcome to Yuma, such as it is. My name's McNeil. Folks around here mostly call me Mew. That's because. 
ought to use mules in my freighting business. Good thing I didn't use jackasses. <laughs> my name's Harmon, Dave Harmon. No, I uh, thought you might be needing these. Last time a lawman left here, I picked him up for safekeeping. As a matter of fact, I was just looking for him. Well, it didn't take long for trouble to find you. Well, I guess you could say it uh, goes with the job. Yeah, but you didn't back away. That's real refreshing to this town. See, we ain't had any real law here yet. Mostly the folks plan on just standing back and watching to see what happens. Figure it's no use to get all head up over what might be. <laughs> now, they got a point. That king boy there, his brother's an important man around these parts. So I hear. Yeah, well, like I was saying, I own McNeil Freight, which ain't doing too well lately. Mostly of fish and big yellow cats pan fried better than beef. Well, holler if you need anything. As a matter of fact, uh, you can send a wagon out for those stagecoach passengers, and uh, I could use some advice on a place to stay. Oh, we got two hotels in town, the best ones across the street. My stable's real handy for your stock right next door. And thank you for your business. Sign right there, please. Marshal? Dave Harmon. You'll want a room overlooking the street. Ten dollars a week, Marshal, in advance. The last officer of the law didn't stay a week. And I didn't collect, either. A month in advance. Well, at least you're an optimist. I'm Julie Williams. I own the hotel. I live alone, Marshal. I prefer it that way, and I believe in laying out the situation. It avoids misunderstanding. Well, I'll try to keep that in mind. We certainly wouldn't want any misunderstandings. What do you think you're doing? I got the wrong room. I'll say you have. Didn't anybody ever teach you you can go to jail for stealing? Please, senor. Do not tell the Lord. Son, I am the law. Mm. I'll shoot. Pulling a gun on a marshal. You'd get another five years for that. If you will let me go, I will not shoot. I don't make bargains with criminals. Especially when I got no bullets in the gun. Where'd you get this? What's your name? You got a family kid? I took care of myself. Yeah, so I noticed. Where'd you come from? Nogales. How'd you get here? On my horse. Most of the way. He died many miles away from here. He was old. Where'd you get a horse? Mm hmm. One thing you better learn, kid. When you need something, try asking for it. Now, what are we gonna do with you, kid? You don't know anybody, you got no place to stay, and you got no money. Thank <laughs> you. 
If I catch you stealing again, I'll whip you to a frazzle. What's your name? Andres. The marshal's office needs cleaning. You can sleep there at night. Do a bad job, I'll pay you a dollar a week. You work hard, I'll pay you three. Who decides if I do good? Can't eat on a dollar a week. On three dollars, you can. Take that gun. Kid. A little advance on your salary. Get yourself some clothes and something to eat. Somebody sees me going into his office. So that's what I brought you along for. You're just a good army officer. Drop by to pay his respects to the marshal. Hey, now listen, relax. We'll have King out of there in two minutes, and our problems are over. Just a couple of friends who believe in justice. Come on, we got a horse outside. Hurry him up. Where's the horse? Across the street. Whoever you are, me and my brother won't forget you. Yeah, I'm sure you won't. Now get going. Did Arch Kingo rip that marshal apart? But we were only gonna let him escape. Yeah, but now you're in all the way. Outside, and they shot him with your shotgun. What they looked like? It was dark. I cannot see. What did you see? No faces. But one of the men was wearing high, shiny boots. I could see them. Very shiny. High, shiny boots? Sounds like army. Army uniform. You owe 
Gregory's kill escaping prison is Marshall. I didn't kill him. And who did? I don't know that yet. He was killed with buckshot. You're carrying a shotgun. I saw it. It was not Senor Hamid. You saw it? I was sleeping there. What did you see, kid? I just know it wasn't Senor Hamid. Well, who was it? What did you see? It was too dark. Oh, I see. You're sure it wasn't Harmon, then you say it was too dark to see who it really was. That's not good enough, kid. Harmon, when Arch King rides into Yuma tomorrow, he's gonna want more than a Mexican kid's word that you didn't kill his brother. Senor Harmon? From my grandfather. From your grandfather? See. Si. Your grandfather what? The horse. Oh. The gun, too? See. Si. Lock the door. Marshal Harmon from Yuma to see the commanding officer. Sign the log. Commanding officer's quarters is across the parade ground there where the light is. Everybody sign in and out? After colors by sundown. Major Lucas's orders. He's the commanding officer here. I see a Captain Sims White signed out at 7 o'clock. Yes, sir. Officers only tonight. Enlisted men are restricted. He the only one to leave? Yes, sir. He's a quartermaster. Thank you. Marshal Harmon, you see the commander. The Major retired several hours ago, sir. I'm his orderly. Can we put you up until morning? I can't wait. I'm sorry, sir. My orders is not to wake him. Well, I wouldn't want you to disobey your orders. The major would be along shortly. Marshal Harmon couldn't wait until morning to see you, sir. I must admit, he is indicted. I'll assume you'll have a good explanation. Two men broke a prisoner out of my jail in Yuma tonight. Whoever did it shot him in the back in the street, and one of those men was wearing an army uniform. Where's the sound recall? Or have my command kill each other in the dark? Yes, sir. Come on this way. So you 
think one of my men was in your jail tonight? I checked your log at the gate, and Captain Sims White was the only soldier left the fort. White is our quartermaster. He has the run of the area. Now, wait just a minute. You're not accusing Captain White, are you? I'm not accusing anybody. White has a perfect record. He comes from an army family. His father's a brigadier general. Just what are the uh, captain's duties? Principally to supply the army forts from Yuma to Santa Fe. He also regulates beef and other supplies to the Indians. Well, what exactly does that mean? That's part of the terms of our peace treaty. They stay on their reservations, and we supply them with cattle and some of their other needs. I notice those wagons out there have got Decker's name on them. They're waiting for the cattle drive to come in. And when they do, Decker will ship out the cattle and other supplies to all the reservations in the territory. Does Decker handle all your freight? According to law, we have to get two bids before we can make a deal. The bids come from Mules, McNeil, and Decker. And somehow, Decker has always come up with the lowest bids. Which, uh, are then submitted to Captain White. That's part of the duty of the quartermaster. Now, wait just a minute, Marshal. I'd like to know just what you're implying. That trail herd you're waiting on is headed by Arch King. It'll be here tomorrow. His two brothers came into town today, and I had to kill one of them. I want the two men that killed the other one. I know, Arch King. It'll be hard to handle. I've been expecting you, Harmon. Any lawman assigned near my post. I want to know all about him. And no secrets from the Army. It's all here. Harmon, Dave, formerly a lieutenant, good war record. Moved his family west after the peace. Two years later, his wife, Sarah, was raped and murdered by raiders. They also killed your son, Jeremy. There are no arrests. The raiders were reported to be wearing Union Army uniform. Not just reported, I saw them. He left his ranch. Next reported to be United States Marshal. Served in Fort Defiance Territory, Fort Tularosa Territory, Fort Concho Territory. Present assignment, Yuma. You know, that's the part that interested me most. Every place you've served is near an army fort. Is that a coincidence, Mr. Harmon? I hope you won't let your hatreds cloud your duty, as far as my men are concerned. Where can I find Captain White? Well, if the King Cattle Drive is that close, he probably would be at the Indian Reservation, planning delivery. That's about 10 miles farther up the river. Harmon? I'd go easy if I were you. You haven't got much evidence to arrest a man on. If he's innocent, he's got nothing to worry about. If he's guilty, he'll face a court-martial. If he's guilty, he'll face me.
Good night, too. Yes, yes. Moa Hoka. Yes, yes. Caballo. Why you come? I'm looking for a Captain White, quartermaster for the army. You seen him? One day back. What time did he leave? Captain White, not fool to stay much time here. Well, I can't say as I blame him if he got the reception I did. Plenty talk. You go now. Wait a minute. I don't understand this. White brings you his supplies. I'd think you'd be glad to see him. My people, hungry. Treaty, say, 50 cattle month. Where are cattle, star man? Well, there's a trail herd on its way here now. Many cattle come to port for Yumas. Not many cattle come here. What happens to them? Ask your Captain White. I intend to. Hunger make anger. Anger make war. We come, get cattle. I can't let you do that, but if you got cattle coming, I'll see you get them. Promises. No, not just promises. I'm here to bring the law. White man law or red man law? Whatever the treaty says. Cup of that coffee, folks. Well, howdy, Sanders. What brings you way out here? Bad news, Mr. King. It's your brothers. They're both dead. Murdered. Do you hear me, Mr. King? Who done it? We got a new marshal in Yuma, a man by the name of Harmon. We got the one brother down the saloon and back shot the other in front of the jail. Why? That I don't know. Slim, tell the boys with the herd to move them on towards town. The rest of you get mounted. <laughs> was at the fort asking a lot of questions. He won't get anywhere. Major Lucas sent for me. What did he want? I didn't see him. I made some excuse and came right here. Well, that was a stupid thing to do. The King Herd will be in tomorrow. We can't take any chances. I want you to deliver every head to the Indians at the reservation. 
All right, now you listen to me. I've already got those cattle sold out in California. That's thousands of dollars. I don't intend to let some shiny badge or a blue uniform throw it away. Last night, you framed me into helping to kill a man. I'm through, Nelson. Why you said it yourself? You helped kill a man. I'd guess that Harmon was partial to hanging. Now, your only hope, if you want to keep away from a rope burn, is to do exactly what I tell you. Now, when this is over, and it will be soon, we go our separate ways, and all of this is forgotten. Now, Captain, you just go back to the hotel and stay there. Arch King will be in town soon. He'll take care of Harmon, and none of us will have anything to worry about. Heard you out all night. Find your man. Not yet. Can I help you? Hey, Mike. Tell me about Nels Decker. A mighty powerful man around these parts. He's got a lot of dollars to back him up. Uh, it's too bad, I guess. That makes him pretty tough competition to bid against. Well, like I said, he's got all the dollars. What do you know about Arch King? I know you're going to be meeting him real soon. King. You Harmon? U.S. Marshal Harmon. From what I hear, I'm gonna have to kill you. You afraid of me, King? Hardly. Let's get down off these horses and talk some. Could be you heard part of the story wrong. My office is back there. Your brothers took over a stagecoach outside of town. They were liquored up, breaking the law. When I arrested them, the youngest one took three shots at me, and I had to kill him. I think you'll find all the witnesses you need that'll verify what I'm telling you. What about Rawl? Well, I had him locked up back there. Now, last night, somebody broke him out. Shot him in the back out there in the street. And it wasn't me. It is your gun. No, that's true enough. Sam was wild. Whiskey don't mix with that. And I can't argue with a man for shooting when he's drawed on. But back shooting something else and somebody in this town's gonna pay. You're the marshal. Rawl is your prisoner in your jail. It's your gun that killed him. I only got your words you didn't pull the trigger on him. 
Now then, tomorrow comes sundown, you ain't got the man. As far as I'm concerned, you are the man. What's this all about? Call me a Mexican. You did. True, ain't it? Well? See? Si. Can't change that. No. And quit complaining, kid, and be proud of what you are. Fighting for is different than fighting against. Well, you better get back to that jail and get it cleaned up. You handle that very nicely. I wish they were all that easy. <laughs> Not in Yuma. Oh, maybe. Well, I've got to ride out to the port and see if I can find a Captain White. Oh, well, that's a long way to go for nothing. White checked into my place a couple of hours ago. Room 16. Thank you. When I left King and his men, they were madder than wet hornets. What happened? That Harmon fellow's smart, real smart. Somehow he took the initiative away from King, and the whole thing ended up in talk, nothing else. So, what do we do now? Nothing. We stay quiet, very quiet, and very close to Captain White. You own that man after last night. He's coming apart of the seams. You get over to the hotel. Don't let him get out of your sight, and don't let him open his mouth. I certainly appreciate your help. Uh, thanks, and would you close the door on your way out? He's in there. I warned you about taking out your hatred and revenge on my men. I'm going to wire Washington immediately to ask permission to put this town under martial law. I'd be sure of my facts if I were you. The facts are, Captain White has nothing but ketchup on his chest. And he's been dead for hours. What kind of trickery is this? I found White dead beside a ton of cyanide crystals. Are you telling me that this is a suicide? I fired those shots to make people think otherwise. Washington said clean up Yuma. Well, right now, there's cowboys and a trail boss ready to tear this town apart. And out there, there's Indians being shortchanged on beef issue, and they're hungry. If they explode, this territory could go up in smoke. 
And I think that White and Decker are the men responsible. Now, Decker doesn't know the White is dead yet, and he's got to be afraid he'll talk. And sometime tonight, I expect somebody to pay White a visit. And when they do, I intend to be here. Right now, I'm hungry. I haven't slept in two nights, and it's hot, and I'm flat out of patience. All right, Marshal. You can trust the doc here. We'll keep quiet about White until tomorrow. But only until tomorrow. How's the food? Good, good, fine, too. Mm -hmm. By the way, you owe me for a bottle of ketchup. And uh, you owe me a promise not to talk about it. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me ask you a question. I understand that Decker's got most of the money here. He bring it? When Decker first came to town, he brought everything he owned in one wagon. Now he owns 50 of them. Not much freight in the territory moves without him. You must make it kind of rough on McNeil. He gets a short haul job once in a while. Not much more than that. I guess Decker's got quite a few hands working for him. Mm-hmm. Thank you. 30 or 40 men on and off. And his head man, Derek Saunders. Yeah, I've seen him. What do you know about him? I think he could be dangerous. Are you at least getting close to something? Maybe. Oh, I hope so. I'm afraid Arch King won't wait. Two brothers dead, you can't blame him. Do you think I killed Raul King? Do you think I'd be helping you if I did? We've had so many lawmen in Yuma. There's one thing different about you. I think you care. Sometimes it takes more than that. Julie, how many banks are there in the territory? Only three outside of ours. One in Tucson, one in Bisbee, one in Tombstone. Thanks. Dave, be careful. Well, I don't know what you're worried about. What? I've got my rent paid in advance. sleep over at the hotel tonight. You tell the lady I said you'd have my room. But why? I don't think I'm going to be needing it. Now, you get going. This better work. With a dedicated man like him, you know it will.
I told you I'd beat you tonight. Checkers was always my strong point back home. I wouldn't throw about it for you. You remember last Tuesday? Hey, Mules, look, the store. Harvey, you go sound the alarm quick. Fire! Fire! Fire at Harvey's store! That's a fire bell. Where, where are they getting fire? Fire, Harvey! Somebody get it! Drop that gun. Easy, Marshal. Now, easy. Slow down. I can see where you're a little upset with finding me here like this. I mean, I did start out with the best of intentions, and all I've done is kind of follow things up. You know, uh, this is gonna sound rather foolish, but, uh... I told you to drop that gun, and now I'm telling you to drop the smart talk. All right, all right. So I admit I broke into jail. So what does that prove? Listen, Harmon, I got my... You stand there telling me I got no proof and you're stinking of coal oil? You set that fire to try to get me away from the jail long enough to kill White. You can't prove that. My story is I just dropped by to comfort an old friend. The other ear is a little trickier. The gun tends to pull to the left. All right, all right. But all I was gonna do is bust them out. Like you busted Ronald King out of jail? You're gonna write it out just like it happened and then you're gonna sign it. I told you, I was just gonna bust them out of jail. All right. We'll do it the hard way. Outside. Where are you taking me? We're gonna have a little talk with Mr. Arch King. Fire, Senor Harvey, there's Get enough! <laughs> I want five minutes. All right, five minutes. But you hurt that kid, and I promise you, this world ain't big enough for you to find a place to hide in. Five minutes. Sanders took the boy. Sanders? You seen him? No. You get word to Major Lucas. Tell him to take over while I'm gone. Uh, what do we do with Captain White? 
bury him. I'm sorry they got away. It was my fault. Don't you worry about that, kid, as long as you're not hurt. I'm all right. Any idea where they went? No, but Senor Deca said it was time to leave. He tied me up while the other man got the horses. All right, you get back to the hotel and you wait for me there.
Hold it. Now turn around slow. I'd kill you right now, but I want to see you die. Now throw down that rifle. I got your gun. With the left hand. Two fingers. Slow. Now throw it down. Biggest mistake of your life, Harmon, was coming to Yuma. You had to stick your nose in my business. Your business? Those Indians will go to war before they starve, and a lot of people are gonna get killed. There's nothing you can do about it. With you dead, Captain White won't talk. He'll go out to the reservation, as usual, tell the Indians the beef is coming, and deliver most of it to me to ship out. I collect from the army, take it west and sell it all over again. You don't think I'd let a nosy marshal spoil that good of business, do you? You're stupid, Harmon. Dying for a filthy pack of Indians. <laughs> Get cattle, food. Go back to the reservation. I'll see you get your beef and supplies. Why, we trust you. Where's the wisdom in saving a man's life if you can't trust him? We wait. One of them, the man? Yeah. Well, he can't very well deny it, can he? I guess you're gonna want more proof. Sanders and White killed your brother. They were both working for Decker. Why would Decker want my brother dead? I'm coming to that. Decker came out here with one wagon, stone broke, and in just a short time, he had government contracts and 50 wagons. Now, somebody had to back him up with money, help him get those contracts. Somebody who was familiar with the facts, figures, and procedures followed in delivering cattle and supplies to the Indians. Marshal! Just what are you insinuating? I'm not insinuating, I'm telling you. Somebody here, somebody in this town, was Decker's boss. What's all that got to do with my brother? 
that somebody also knows who killed him and why. Well, who is it? Major Lucas here told me that two bids have to be made on every government contract. That's right. McNeil, you were afraid another freight outfit would come into town and put you out of business. So you brought Decker in, set him up, and let him underbid you. You got the bids and the blame, and you got a nice cut of the profits, including what Decker's been stealing from the Indians, which is considerable. And that's where White came in. He covered up for Decker. Harmon, that story's a cockeye and ain't worth answering. Well, you won't have to. I figured you were too smart to keep the money here in town, so I sent a telegram to every bank in the territory. While you were doing a lot of fishing and no business, you put over $40,000 in the bank at Bisbee. You want more proof? I didn't kill Royal King. That was Decker's idea. You mean you didn't pull the trigger? But you let him kill Rawl because, like Decker, you felt sure that Arch King would kill me, and that would keep things wide open for you. You've done your job, Marshal. Step out of the way. I can't let you do that. My brother's killing lays heavy on me. Get out of the way. You kill him, I'll have to arrest you for murder. Get out of my way, Harmon. He's my prisoner, King. One of us will have to die for him. And it better not be the Marshal. Because then it becomes army business. Go home. I'll see McNeil gets what's coming to him. I promise you that. With your words, poor payment for my brother. Shows another killing. I'm sorry about your brothers. Me too. Whatever you catch, I'll cook. But you have to clean it. There's no catfish in here. Oh, yes, there are. You're just not doing it right then. You have to let your line down. You see, get it down in the mud. That's where the big ones are, right down there. Do you fish a lot? When I was your age, that's practically all I did. Andreas here is catching your breakfast for you. Well, you can't get it much fresher than that. You know what he says? He doesn't know how to swim. Is that right, kid? Never know what it's a swim at where I was. Well, there's plenty here. Would you teach me? Maybe. When, senor? What's your hurry? I better be good at it. You might at that. Teach me? Well, we'll get around to it. No, senor. Thank <laughs> you. 
You are a persistent little cuss. Hey! Oh! swim almost as well as I do. I never learned how either. <laughs> you don't know how to swim? Oh. Oh, you wouldn't do that to me. Would you? 